Hey folks, it's Jared Mananen from the website TahoeTrailGuide.com. Today I'm bringing you a short video on sidestepping and using the herringbone technique while cross-country skiing in the backcountry. Today is also a special gift because I'm bringing you a 1970s kung fu movie style dubbing of this video. It was so blasted windy out there that I couldn't hear myself even think. So I'm just going to do a voiceover for this entire project. But like I said, specifically I'm going to be talking about sidestepping and using the herringbone technique. Both techniques are very basic for classic cross-country skiing, but in my opinion, they're essential to safe travel in the backcountry. As illustrated right now by me, normally if the snow would have been favorable and soft, I would have just rode this little line down past the rocks and through the trees, but because it's so wind-scoured and icy, there's no way that I was gonna rely on just beelining it down through there. So you saw that I sidestepped down that angle of terrain. The idea behind sidestepping is to have your skis perpendicular to the fall line or the hill, such as Nicole is demonstrating here, and then having the actual ski base 90 degrees to the force of gravity. So you would have this platform angle of 90 degrees and you won't slip. In softer snow conditions, you can deviate a little bit from that 90 degrees, but ultimately that's the sweet spot for not slipping. Maria here is now demonstrating transitioning to the herringbone technique. The herringbone technique is named for the distinctive pattern it leaves in the snow, which resembles a fish skeleton. Using the herringbone technique isn't quite as straightforward as sidestepping up a hill. You have to play with the angles a little bit, but essentially you're cheating the inside edge of the skis as you're making a V uphill. The steeper the train, the wider that V is going to be. The herringbone is used for steep terrain. The sidestep is used for even steeper terrain. But in many respects, I toggle between both techniques when negotiating variable terrain. One of the key elements to sidestepping up or down a hill and using the herringbone technique is that you need to make sure that your uphill edge of your ski is the edge that's biting into the snow. That'll be the one that prevents you from slipping downhill or slipping backwards. In order to keep that uphill edge of your ski biting into the snow so that you don't slip back, you need to set the edge. And sometimes this requires you actually slapping that ski into the snow. In order to accomplish all of this, you really need to fully transfer your weight from one ski to the next. I don't mean to criticize her technique, but watch at minute two and three seconds and you'll see how Maria slips back just slightly on a couple of those push-offs, which to me tells me that she hasn't fully committed to leaving that one ski and transferring all of her weight to the next. In this example, I'm showing a variation on maintaining that platform angle. I'm gliding down the hill and you can see my knees bending slightly so the uphill edge bites into the snow. It's a variation of side slipping, which I will demonstrate here on some pretty nasty wind scoured snow. I keep that platform angle greater than 90 and I'm able to slide down. This is not my preferred method of travel, but I did want to demonstrate it for you. And then here I transition into the herringbone. And when I bring that left ski up, I try to bite the uphill edge into the snow so that I'm not slipping back down. So most normal people wouldn't even bother coming out in conditions like this. It is pretty variable. It's pretty dangerous. That said, use your own uh, caution and sense of safety and responsibility when going out into the back country. But to be honest, if I only went out when it was beautiful conditions and perfect conditions, that would probably cut down my ski days by about 75%. The reality is, is there's seldom ever truly ideal conditions. So I make the effort to come out. If I can get some turns in, I will. If I can get some views in, and that's mostly what I like doing is just taking in the views, being out in nature. But yeah, use your own sense of uh, self-preservation when deciding to go out of the back country, but don't let 
the conditions, uh, anything but a perfect condition, prevent you from going out because nature is nature. It cares not for our plans, but if we go out there with the skills and the tools to come home safely, we're gonna have an enjoyable time. And that's what I love to do. Okay, folks, that's about all I got. I definitely appreciate you sticking it out. I do apologize for the Franken edits that I did on this particular video, but we do what we can with what we got. And I'd like to think that the selection of clips that I chose were good enough to illustrate the point I was trying to make. So if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and then check out my website, tahotrailguide.com for more information. Take care, everyone.